Surprised to see you out here. <laughs> Decided to get some fresh air. Yeah. That heroin the Dixie Mafia's been selling? It's run out of there by a man named Charlie Kincaid. Meaning all the other dealers around here kick up to him. Charlie stays away if he can help it, so you're gonna have to put the squeeze on him. I flagged a couple of his guys. You get them to talk, they'll tell you how to get to him. Now, from what I hear, Charlie's only in this for the money. He's not a true believer like those other Dixie Mafia assholes. So maybe if I talk sweet to him, he'll decide to bail on Doucette and come work for me. Assuming I can draw him out. I got something I can help you with that. That's what I wanted to show you. New Bordeaux's on a standard communication grid, so getting a system of wiretaps up and running should be fairly easy. Just install this little beauty on a junction box, and I'll be able to construct an intelligence map of the nearby area. How many more of these you got? Just those. The parts are on an agency watch list. But man managed to dig up more of them, we could wiretap the entire city. <laughs> All right. God damn it! People think living under these commie motherfuckers is so great they should move their asses over to Moscow. You find more of these, you bring them to me. You are way too sensitive about that shit, man. Oh, fuck those motherfuckers. Fucking traitors. I'll see you when it's time to move against Charlie. So they're just supposed to sweat? You tread on thin ice, boy. Uh, uh. Jesus Christ! got going on at the church. There's all kinds of dope over at the church. If you destroy it, the boss is gonna lose a lot of money. You run with me now.
But I'm serious, man. You heard about the curse that witch put on Bobby? That boy was weak-minded. You are, too, if you believe in that voodoo nonsense. They say he couldn't get it up after that. At the car end. Oh, yeah? So why'd he shoot himself? Listen to me. That poor son of a bitch got drafted. You know Bobby wasn't about to go What do you no think's more. behind that shit? And don't let them goddamn heathens and their devil worship nonsense get in your head. A peaceful night's gone to shit. This ain't the place for you, son. I found him. Come on. God damn it. Yeah. Boy's done.
Bad it stopped. Mm, smells like pussy. in that seat. Boy, what the hell are you doing? You're gonna tell me about the dope operation. Messing with. Talk or this will go bad for you. All units, search is called off. Repeat, abandon search. Return to patrol. I spill and it fucking got me. You trying to piss me off? There's a fucking car there. Slow down. Slow down. Slow the fuck down. Talk to me, asshole. Boss has got him, boys. He's dealing around the hall. Find a new line of work.
Fucking 50. Making a killing today. 75, 100. Huh? Don't like folks skulking around our business. You're gonna be real sorry. Get your fucking hands off. Find out what the fuck that was. I've been listening in on old Charlie, and he isn't such a bad fellow. He's more of a kinder, gentler redneck, and as luck would have it, his wife is expecting. Man in that situation usually doesn't care who he works for, as long as he's still above ground. <laughs> Poor sap starts blubbering when the two of them talk about names. Right now, it's between Bocephus and Thomas Lee. Anyway, his guys have the church locked down, and all of them are more of the shoot first, let God sort them out variety of redneck. You get your hands on Charlie, though. He'll do what he's told without putting up much of a fuss. All your intel's been updated. You going back to the motel? After I get something to eat, I'll see you when you're done dealing with these inbred assholes. Richie not to put Charlie in charge of the heroin, but he insisted. Said he owed Charlie's old man or some shit. Ah, uh, Charlie ain't half the man his pop was. Shit. When that nigger shows his face around here, we'll deal with them. And then deal with Charlie. Okay, okay, just stay out of my way. So sorry about that.
strangest thing I've ever blessed would be a young garments. She and her husband were having trouble conceiving, what? and she thought it might help. It was a little awkward, but their little girl was born. We praise God. <laughs> Been a while, huh? Huh? Where you hiding now? Got him! Over here! Is this uppity fuck? Work for me, and you might live long enough to raise your family. Okay, sure thing. Whatever you want. That's good, Charlie. Real good. Send your men to the First Baptist Church. Those Dixie heathens have been handled. I'll have some of my men come right over. And thanks. your name for the record? Donovan. John. Mr. Donovan, you understand that by appearing before this committee, you have explicitly waived your constitutional rights in regards to counsel and self-incrimination. Sure. And you further acknowledge that by appearing before this committee, you agree to disclose all information pertaining to the events that occurred in New Bordeaux during the summer and fall of 1968. <laughs> I wouldn't be sitting here if I didn't. You were an operative in the Central Intelligence Agency from 1953 to 1969, is that correct? That's right. When did you arrive in Vietnam? August of 1961. Please describe for this committee 
the actions you took during your time in Vietnam. I spent a couple months in Saigon. Then I was transferred to a base in Laos. I was operated by the Special Activities Division. We trained and equipped the Hmong and then turned them loose on the NVA. We're running arms and supplies via the Ho Chi Minh Trail. And you worked with Lincoln Clay in what eventually became the Phoenix Program. Within a year or so, Lincoln was heading up his own PRU. We'd cross over into Vietnam and locate enemy targets and either kill them or bring them back for interrogation. <laughs> Just thinking about it? Jesus Christ. You wouldn't believe the shit we did to those cocksuckers. Da 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 da